Hi, Alex Olivier here from Serbos. Uh, today we're going to look at a truly cloud native way and approach to authorizing your application, your business logic, uh, using kind of the modern technology stack, uh, making use of the vast ecosystem of CNCF projects. Uh, so quickly, Serbos is an open source decoupled access control for your software. We are a CNCF member, and this is going to be kind of a run through of how you can use best of breed tools uh, and projects to build a scalable application with fine grained authorization, as well as it being monitorable, scalable and observable. And we're going to kind of run through what that looks like and what a typical workflow would be if you were to go and implement something like Serverless for authorization across your application. So a quick run through of the app. app. Um, this is Serb Finance. It's a kind of an expense tracking system. I'm sure many of you are familiar with you know, traveling for work and having to file your expenses, those sort of things. So this is a, a demo app, um, node back in, React front end, um, very simple API. Um, and uh, kind of what it exposes is we have our different users. So for simplicity, it's a very simple kind of user switcher here. And we have users, they have different roles. So from our identity system, we know what role this person Sally is in. We have some attributes about them. So if she's in the sales department, she's in EMEA. And this is what the application kind of allows. So I can go into my expenses. I can see all the expenses that I've submitted as Sally. And they've got dates, vendors, amounts, these sort of things. If I go into it, there's the different actions. So I can go and edit this expense, but I can't approve or reject because it's my own expense. Uh, if I were to go back and look at maybe one that's already approved, I can't edit it because it's not approved. So there's already some business logic in here that defines who's allowed to do what. Uh, if I go and look over to be this other person, so now I'm Ian, I'm in the IT department. I am an admin, so I can actually see a lot more here. So there's, suddenly I can access this admin section. I've got a report section. If I go into expenses, I can now see you know, expenses from Sally, but also there's one from Frank. If I go and look at the actions, I can do all actions because I'm that's kind of the super user, You know, some other sections that you know, we pretend will be implemented. Um, now if we're going to look at something a bit more interesting, so we have Frank here. So Frank is in the finance team, uh, he's a user uh, in the EMEA department. If I can go into my expenses, so now I can see all the ones that have been submitted. So Sally, Frank, etc. If I go and look at my Frank one, uh, I can't approve it because um, there's some sort of business rule that says you can't approve your own expenses. And uh, now if I go and look at this particular one from 12, uh, Global Airlines, $12,000. Uh, even though I'm in the finance department, I can't approve it. Uh, if I actually go and flip over to go and be uh, Derek, he's actually a finance manager, uh, because he's in the finance team, he's also got the manager role, he can approve it. So again, there's kind of some intrins intrinsic logic uh, in here. If we go and look at kind of how the rest of the applications are architected, um, it's all on our GitHub. So it's running a Kubernetes cluster, we have our application layer, it's talking to an API that's running, uh, and then the data is being stored inside of Postgres, um, using Prisma as an ORM if you're in the TypeScript ecosystem. Uh, all our authorization checks are going through a Serbos instance, and we'll go into kind of what that looks like. The Serbos instance itself is getting its policies from a Git repo, so uh, it's pulling policies and the logic is held outside. Uh, we're using Argo workflow to actually test and validate those policies before pulling it into the, the Serbos instance. And then on our monitoring stack, uh, we have traces coming both from our app uh, and also from Serbos, so we get kind of uh, open telemetry. Uh, tracing so we can see what's going on. Uh, Prometheus metrics, so our app our, our, and our service instance are exposing Prometheus metrics, which are being scraped. And also our logs are being collected by uh, Loki. So doing log capture from our different containers that are running here and then exposing all that through a Grafana interface. So if I can flip over to our uh, Grafana, we got various kind of interesting metrics, your typical sort of request rate by path, request latency. Uh, we have some metrics coming from our Cerberus instance, so we can see the different checks being done. So there's like a, a, a check resource and a plan resource. We can see number of policies that are currently in our, our cluster. Uh, and we can actually see our decisions. So how many allows, how many denies, how many uh, uh, resource plans that have been committed, have been run, and we'll go into what that means in a second. Uh, and then we also get all the logs. So this is all being captured by Loki. So we're actually getting audit log. So every action you are seeing me doing and clicking around is generating a log um, which is being uh, outputted by Serbos in a standardized format and being, in this case, picked up by Loki and demonstrated here. So we can see uh, we have some inputs of an expense. Um, we have Derek trying to look at this particular expense ID 3, these attributes, trying to see whether he can view, view approver, delete, allow. And we can see the different responses here. So the allow for view approver, allow for delete, deny for an update, allow for approve, allow for a view. So we actually get a nice audit log and audit trail and we can even see 
what my effective roles are based on those policies, what's going on. For Flow to Yoga, so we can go and see traces, application traces. So here's like those API calls to go and get a particular resource. We can see the request coming in. Here we've got some middleware to do authentication. We're going to fetch the data from the database. Um, and then we actually go and do a check resource call out to the service instance, and that brings back our results as we saw kind of from the other end. So we saw from the logs, service making decision. This is the uh, telemetry tracing showing us of the actual request uh, pipeline. If we very quickly go and look at the actual code, show you how this is all wired up. So in our server back end, as I said, a very simple kind of uh, and uh, express server in, in Node. We have different routes like to render the root page to go and get a particular expense. And the way this logic is done, so we've authenticated the request already. So we know from a, a request header, authorization header, who the user is, um, and that's being passed in this request object. So when we want to go and get a particular expense, we first go and fetch that from the database. So using Prisma, go and look up by ID, um, for send some attributes, if we can't find it, return a sort of an error. Um, we set up some spans so we can get nice tracing around exactly what's going on. And then uh, our business logic has very different rules around who's allowed to do what. Uh, and you can imagine you might end up having to hard code if this, then that, um, or a case switch style logic to work out that can this user, in this case, view a particular expense or not. Uh, and that logic will be kind of repeated across different API handlers. How service works is you just now replace that with this uh, SDK and we have the service SDK which actually runs a check resource call. So we now simply package up the information about the principal. So this is our, our user. At the particular resource they're trying to access, so we have the resource type expense, we have various different attributes about it, and then different actions that we want to check permissions for. Can this person view, can this approve, can this delete, can this update, can this approve? That goes off and then service goes and checks those and you get a response back for each of those, either a, an allow or a deny. So it's a, a, a Boolean. And here we're just returning a map um, of all the different permissions and whether it's allowed or not. So these are just booleans. Uh, some further logic to you know hide certain fields based on further permissions, but ultimately we'll return back an object to the browser with the reason, the um, the information about the particular expense if they're allowed to view it, uh, and then what permissions that user has upon it, and that's actually what's being used to render these buttons. So firstly, to view the page, you must have the view permission. And then for each of these actions, edit, approve, reject, delete, et cetera, that's being driven uh, by, by Servos, and that's coming back from the response. And then it's a similar setup for the other actions. So to approve, we look it up, we go and find it. We then go and check Servos whether this user is allowed to do the approve action on this particular resource. If it is, then we actually trigger it. In this case, it's a database update to set the status to approve and set the ID of who approved it to the person making the request and goes off and you know, similar logic for those. So let's go and actually look at our, our policy. So our service policies, um, we have um, a set of common roles. So these are roles that we call derived roles that will get kind of added to the request or to the user base at request time. So for example, the owner, you are given the owner role in the request. If the owner ID attribute of the resource is equal to the ID of the person making the request, uh, similar, we give you the finance attribute if you have finance as your department um, and you're a user, and we give you the finance manager role if your department is finance and you have the parent role of manager, you become a finance manager, and similar sort of thing for, for regions. Now, if we go and look at natural resource policy, so this is the service expense resource, we have different actions, so view, approve, create, update, delete, etc. Can we're talking about, and through these YAML definitions, we define our business logic. So to view it, we're saying you must be the owner of it, you must be in the finance team, or you must be regional manager. Um, to see who approved it, we only want to show this to people who are either the owner of the resource and it's approved. So here we say to the view approver action is allowed if you are the owner. So the owner ID is equal to the principal ID and the condition of uh, status is set to approve. So you can't see who um, uh, approved a particular expense unless you're the owner and it's approved. Um, or there's another rule here that says you the view approver action is allowed if you're in the finance or the finance manager roles. So if you're in the finance team, you can always see who approved it. Something a bit more interesting is these uh, the actual approve action. So our business logic says a principal that belongs to the finance role is allowed to perform the approve action if the amount is less than $10,000 and they did not create it. 
So here, our logic says the approve is allowed if your derived role is finance and all these conditions meet. So here we're looking at the, actually the attributes about the resource and the principle to make a decision. So all of these must match. The amount field must be less than 10,000. So that's that less than $10,000 rule. The owner ID must not equal to the principal ID. So you can't approve your own expense. And the status must be opened. Now, additionally, we have our finance manager role. It's just the same logic, but there's no cap. There's no, no limit. Uh, and what that looks like back in the UI, so if I swap myself over to Frank, who's just our regular finance person, I'm looking at this expense, which is $12,000. It's not allowed. If I go and look at it as Derek, the action is allowed. So Cerberus is actually, based on the request, giving you a dynamic result for each of these actions. And that's being reflected in the traces. We see these traces go through. Here we go, the request for Derek, and the response is coming back for each of those particular actions. So now let's say our business logic changes and we've got a ticket and we want to kind of evolve this logic. Normally you'd have to go back to your code, update your if else style statements to go and change things um, um, to reflect the new logic. But because our application code and our authorization logic is decoupled through Cerberus these policies and the, a the API application is actually doing a check against the Cerberus instance, we don't need to touch your application code again because all the context about who's making the request and the resource they're trying to access is already being sent to Servos. And so in our policy here, let's say we wanted to change it from $10,000 to $50,000 because you want, you know, your, your team's growing, you want to be able to disseminate um, a responsibility to different parts of the organization. So now anyone that's got the finance role should be allowed to prove it up to $50,000. So what this ultimately means is our existing uh, finance user should now actually be allowed to do it. So I've made this change. Let's go and commit it to our Git repo. So we want to make sure um, we have a nice uh, um, sort of, whoop, can't type at the same time. We want to have a nice sort of GitOps style workflow. So I've now committed that change. I'm going to go add it. I'm going to go, uh, go and commit it. I really can't type. And I'm going to say allow uh, finance team members to approve up to 50k. And of course, it's not going to like my dollar sign. There we go. So I've made that change. And um, the logic is going on. I'm going to go and push that up to my kind of co repo. And, and it's up there. Now at this point, you could set up kind of a CI pipeline in say GitHub Actions or GitLab and have the service instance pulled down. Um, but we're actually gonna use Argo for this. So we have our Argo um, instance running inside of our cluster. So again, it's all kind of locally controlled and we're gonna go submit a job to it. Um, I'm going to go and just go into our infra, uh, show you our kind of make file. So we have this Argo job submit and we're gonna submit a workflow that, that we have uh, available from Cerberus, and we're saying go and uh, grab the policies from this particular repo, this demo app expenses repo, um, run that workflow, and I'm going to do this, and then I'll talk through what it does. It takes a bit of time, but that's now going to go and submit a, a job, and we can see the job's running, and we can go in our Argo UI again, running inside of our cluster, and see what's happening. So what's happening behind the scenes? Uh, we kicked off a job. Um, in this case manually, imagine it being triggered by a, a commit to the Git repo. It's going to go and claim clone down the uh, repo into it. So this is now going to go and fetch the latest commit. It's going to go and fetch uh, the latest policy change, that one we made in that, that YAML file. And this takes a little while to run, but behind the scenes it's you know, pulling down pulling down those policies. And this workflow does a few different things. So with Cerberus, we provide uh, a full sort of CI CD style experience. So there's tooling in there um, to actually write tests and evolve things over time uh, and run in your CI workflow. Firstly, validate that your YAML files are in the correct format against the schema uh, and then actually run tests. So for Cerberus, for this expenses resource, we've actually have our test defined here. So we have some example test data of different principles with different roles. This actually matches what you're seeing in the UI. We have this example, different resources, and then we have some tests. So here we're testing every combination of user and resource and action to go and establish uh, whether our policies are doing as we expect and you know, catching all those edge cases, which 
undoubtedly uh, will occur. Um, may not have thought of. And here we're saying that for you know, Sally, for this particular expense, these actions should be allowed, denied, etc. And we're doing it for kind of different ones, so we can be certain what's going on. Here we're looking at different roles. So you know, we have these principles of Mark and Simon. They now are sales managers. Different resources, different actions, and what the expected um, results comes from. And if we go and actually look at the approve, we have uh, tests that are checking this approve action. And that's what Argo is now running through. It's actually going to pull down its policies, firstly validate that the uh, policies are behaving as they should, and then actually run the tests against them. And if we go and jump back in here, we can actually see what's going on. So we've cloned the repo already. Um, we're running the tests, we're validating it, so this is good. So this, this step hasn't failed, so all our policy files are valid against the specification of service policies. Um, and then we have the test phase. So this is where we're actually running that change through the tests. So this is now executing. Um, so it's using service itself to actually run the tests. And this has, surprise, surprise, failed. If we go and look at the output, we can actually see, oh, yeah, this particular expenses test for Frank for expenses three has failed. Uh, we got a deny, but it was actually allowed. And this is because our, our test data for Frank and this particular expense now breaks the rule. Um, we expected a expense of over $10,000 um, not to be allowed by Frank, who isn't a finance manager, but he is now, uh, we've changed that rule where the limit is $50,000. So that test has caught the, the change. So that's going to actually just going to fix that test because um, you know, we, we've changed our business logic and we want to allow it. So it was approvals for Frank for expenses three. Um, let's check that's right. Yep, expense three approve for Frank. Frank, expense three. So this actually should be allowed now because the limit has changed. So we're going to go and commit that again. We've got the change. Uh, classic fix test commit. Commit that in. Synchronize the changes up. And we're going to go and just uh, rerun run that test. So now we're going to go and give the same process, kick off that job inside of Argo, again, kind of inside our cluster. So it's going to go and pull down the different resources. It's going to pull down our Git repo. And this time it's going to go and run through all the tests. And, and just repeat, I haven't touched my application code. The only thing I've changed now is our application policy. Um, our, you know, our logs, our application, you, know, you confirm it. Our containers are still running. It's still serving requests. Our service instance is still making decisions. Our index size doesn't change. Everything is behaving kind of as it should. Um, and you know, our log, our logs, uh, as we kind of click around, do, do, do. let it again. Frank, I'm still denied. And our tracing here is kind of confirming that. We can see the request going off. We can see it going off to a service instance and coming back. So you get that full visibility end to end of exactly what's going on. So now the CI uh, workflow is validated, it's cloned, the test is now passed. And now what the workflow is doing is actually saying to the serverless instance that's running inside the cluster, saying, yep, there's new policies, they're valid, they're tested, go and pull them down. And that serverless instance is now going to go and fetch the new policies. And if we actually go and look um, at the here, at, inside of here, the requests are kind of being handled. And we'll actually see an audit event occurring, telling us it's gone and uh, downloaded those new policies, which it has. So it's reloaded. Um, so the policies have now been updated. The reload store method has been called. So again, because of the observability and tracing we have, we can see exactly what's going on. And now if I just go and refresh my, my data here, so if I go back it out and then, this is Frank, remember we changed the logic, uh, this one, Ta-da, these buttons are now enabled. So this action has now been validated. So kind of summarize what's going on here um, and recap what we've just seen. Through this architecture, we have an application. Its business logic for authorization has been extracted out into a standalone service using Serbos, CSCF uh, project. Um, that that Serbos instance is pulling down its policies from a repo. Um, we can see exactly what's going on thanks to uh, Open Telemetry, Jaeger, Prometheus, Loki, we have all the logs, we have the metrics, we can see how things are performing, we can see the traces of a request coming out through into the database, out into a service instance before actually returning back, thanks to the Jaeger traces. Um, and then we're using Argo for end-to-end -end, um, workflows for 
compiling, testing, validating the authorization changes. And then once it's done, uh, telling the service, the server service inside of our cluster to reload the policies. And then that is immediately reflected inside of our application because all those checks are, are not hard coded. They're now being dynamically resolved based on that service instance. So this is just you know, touching the tip of the iceberg in terms of what you can do using this architecture. But the cool thing is it enables your fully, very much cloud native, uh, open source as well, uh, authorization uh, application architecture, plugging into all your existing tools around observability, monitoring metrics uh, in a very cloud native fashion uh, and allowing you to iterate on your business requirements around authorization without having to go back to a dev team to go and change the code base. You can just do it through uh, the service policies. If you want to find out more about this, the application is up on the Servos uh, GitHub org, so github.com slash server slash demo app and expenses. And you can find out more about Servos, how these policies are defined, the different tools and everything uh, uh, available at uh, servos.dev. Uh, particularly shout out, we have a playground where you can actually experiment and test uh, policy themselves. And this example application, this expenses app is actually preloaded in here as an example. So you can experiment directly in the browser um, without having to write all this infrastructure, but just know that things are ready to go as and when um, you need them and want to deploy to production. Thanks for your time. Um, always have to chat more. You can come join us uh, on our Slack community. If you go to service.dev and follow the links there, uh, you can find me uh, at Alex Olivier on Twitter. And I look forward to speaking to uh, many of you uh, in the future. Thanks.